through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 167. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're talking about Oliver Stone mm -hmm. in honor of the release of Savages. Mm -hmm. No the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sort of. That should be the poster. <laughs> no. Oliver Stone, uh, kind of an interesting dude. Um, yeah. Kind of a prolific start to his career. Uh -huh. Kind of tailed off since mm -hmm. then, but kind of had a... he's done some pretty impressive mm -hmm. stuff in his career. And, yeah, definitely you know. been a uh, controversial filmmaker. Yes. Sometimes more than others. Yes. I feel like that's a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. Sure. Can't always be controversial. Yeah. And sometimes it tries to be controversial and just no one cares. Yeah. That, that is true <laughs> as well. We're going to start back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would call the possibly greatest year of his career. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mm -hmm. could argue this. There are a few other good years in it. Yeah. But uh, 1986. Mm -hmm. This brought you... First up, we're going to talk about the release of Salvador, mm -hmm. which was one that you had James brought to James Woods. Thank you you like the wood. Thank you, Netflix Instant. This was just one of those ones that was like, you know, suggested from my old days of having an actual disc queue that eventually became streaming right. that I was like, oh, how have I not seen this movie? Oliver Stone, James right. Woods. And it's essentially the story of a journalist who mm -hmm. goes down to El Salvador mm -hmm. during the, was it the military dictatorship that's going on? Yeah, I forget exactly. And what it's the, I mean, very politically... Uh, he gets caught between like the rebels mm -hmm. and the right wing military portion. Yeah, very and volatile to, section. He's a white photographer, and he's trying to get his like girlfriend out of there. Mm -hmm. And it's it's I mean, classic Oliver. He's kind of spent like, a lot of time in in the area, so he's like has a lo local girlfriend, kind of yes. fits into the area. But then stuff starts going down, and he has to try right. to find his way out. And I mean, it's sort of a classic Oliver Stone, like intense political situation mm -hmm. that's in a lot of ways uh, messed up on all sides mm -hmm. of the spectrum. No real winners. Yes. Yeah. And then somebody trying to navigate their way through it, whether on the good or bad side, but just trying to swim their way through the chaos. And as you said, this is a lead it, led, mm -hmm. led, <laughs> lead it, lead it, led, <laughs> led uh, by James Woods. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of funny in some ways for me to think about James Woods because... I mean, a lot. He's a great actor, mm -hmm. but it's been so long yes. since I've really seen a film mm -hmm. that reminded me how great of an actor he is. Yeah. Like every now and then, he pops up in something decent now, but mostly it's just like what we think of as a lot of his front loaded, like his earlier yes. career. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and it's like now it's like cameos on like Family mm -hmm. Guy, and it's sort yeah. of like that's that's or like funny. That horrible Vampires two thousand James Carpenter or Dracula mm. two thousand. James no, I Carpenter think it was movie. vampires. I forget which. Either way, it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, geez, go back. Mm -hmm. Come on, James. Videodrome. Come on, Salvador. These yeah. are good films. I mean, he's he's so crazy over the top <laughs> that, like, mm -hmm. th I mean, he's sort of a great person to work with, uh, Oliver Stone. You notice a lot of those sort of great, over the top, probably borderline druggy people and mm -hmm. a lot of Oliver Stone's early successes. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, for. I mean, a film that probably a lot of people have not heard of, Yeah, I would bet. I mean, a lot of people probably yeah. haven't heard of Salvador. This is actually a film that got a bunch of Academy Award really? nominations. It got nominated for Best Actor mm -hmm. for Lead Role, James Woods, boom, and Best Writing, uh, directly written for the screen, slash Oliver Stone. Wow. Sadly, lost both of those. Uh, Paul Newman, Color of Money, won mm. for Lead Role, and Woody Allen for Hannah and Her Sisters, which... Oh, yes. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, early Woody Allen, that's actually a pretty good Woody Allen, and I don't normally like Woody Allen. Yeah, but. I mean, it's one of those things that, like, I don't know if I think of that as, like, Academy Award winning quality Woody Allen. Like, I, I mean, it's fine, hmm. but, I mean, I'm sure people can write in and shit on that and <laughs> tell me why it's the best Woody Allen ever. I mean, I, you know, I don't know, it's, it's, I always have problems with writing uh, nominations and winners because it's like, this is what bait, he's turning it into a film and it was probably something beforehand Hannah and her no this is this is directly directly for it for the screen oh okay okay so he wrote it okay gotcha yeah both of them did. okay okay yeah okay 
Never mind. You just got served. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Still a good uh, movie. Got to gotta say though, James Woods did win the Indie Spirit Award for male lead, so mm. it got it has that going for it mm-hmm. at least. But you know, it's definitely a much more serious James Woods than goofy, over the top James Woods. Yes, nice most cool. definitely. But that if that wasn't good yeah. enough, mm-hmm. nominations an- and such. Yeah. And- another little film mm-hmm. came out in 1986 for Oliver Stone. Which you might have heard of. Mm -hmm. Something called Platoon. Yeah. I I don't know what something. A little bit iconic. Something about war or something. Vietnam Um, War. Starring Charlie Sheen, who again is sort of a crazy dude Mm -hmm. who might have a fondness Mm -hmm. for the the, uh, narcotics. Mm -hmm. One one. of the earliest uh, cameo roles by Johnny Depp as well. Yep. A whole slew of great actors. Oh, yeah. I mean, Defoe. Defoe, (laughs) Behringer, Forrest Whitaker, Keith David, uh, John C. McGinley, who's Mm -hmm. a recurring guy in Mm -hmm. uh, the Oliver Stone catalog, Mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, Again, essentially the story of a guy who is in a war, Vietnam War specifically, Mm -hmm. and sort of the atrocities he witnesses there that take his... um, Semi enthusiasm <laughs> in the beginning to mm-hmm. a place of like great um, turmoil, and turmoil, yeah, yeah. 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 psychological. And, I mean the the extent that the war pushes him to, and the actions he takes by the end of the movie are pretty. I mean, horrific. Yeah, but and since the film is from his perspective, you get a. Like I don't remember if it's his, his internal monologue or if he's writing letters, but you do get mm. basically internal monologues. So you you not only see what he's doing, but you hear his thoughts and motivations, and you watch those change as the time goes along too. From like being all like you said, all optimistic and kind of into it, and maybe having these reservations, but not being sure. But but to the, at the end, just being completely horrified by it and sickened of it. Well, I mean, the things that he witnesses and what he's forced to do. Like I mean, <laughs> his. Um... I mean, I guess it was classified as a morality crisis. Mm. And I mean, that is a fairly yeah. appropriate description yes. of it. I mean, so... Very powerful film. Very powerful film and kind of highly regarded. Mm-hmm. I mean, it won Best Picture. Oh, wow. Won Best Director. Nice. Got nominated for, let's see, also won Sound, Film Editing, mm-hmm. nominated for Best Actor for Tom Berenger. Nice. Or in supporting role, sorry. Mm, yes, yes. Uh, as well He's as William crazy Defoe in that movie. As yes. is Willem Defoe. Yeah, both both are awesome. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this Oliver- is really one of those films that's like early on in the very very critical representation of the Vietnam War, particularly by Oliver Stone. I mean, oh, yeah. he has at least a couple really notable films that are very critical yes. of the Vietnam War and. I guess, I mean, you'd say war in general. Yeah. And sort of our response Definitely. to war and stuff like that. Uh, gotta also mention, both Willem Dafoe and Tom Berenger are lost mm. for supporting role to Michael Caine from... I don't remember. Hannah ah, and yes. her goddamn sisters. <laughs> no, that's why you don't like it, Spencer. <laughs> no, it's not, that's not why I like it, but I'm sure Oliver Stone's there, like, smoking something. <laughs> yes. Say cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, goddamn, Hannah and her fucking <laughs> sisters. <laughs> yeah. As well that's as... That's, okay, a good point. Again, <laughs> Lost. He was also nominated for this. For mm. Best script written mm. for the wow. screen. Okay. Again. Two well, nominations. Split the dip. Split the vote. They were we'll like, get, which we'll, one do we give it to Oliver Stone for? We'll give it to Woody Allen. Yeah. That's what they we'll, chose. We'll, we'll, we'll take that perspective. We'll, we'll take that spin. But, I mean, uh, this is, I mean, a great film. Uh, I mean, a solid partnership mm-hmm. with Charlie Sheen mm-hmm. that yeah. developed out of this. I mean, for I mean, you could say it was one of uh, Oliver Stone's muses. Mm-hmm. Muse. Muse. During the 80s, probably. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I'd agree with that. He, they definitely did do a lot of work together, as we will see with the next one. Especially the following year, yes. when they did. Again, ar- arguably, I mean, along with Platoon, a few other films, Oliver Stone's most noteworthy mm, film. Yeah, probably. Which is Wall Street. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's probably a few others. JFK, we're not yeah. going to talk about, because there's a great article on the MacGuffin site. That Go it, read it. Yeah, an, an analysis mm. of JFK. Nice. So if you want to talk JFK. Written by... Benjamin Rendell nice. from Minnesota, eh? Um, <laughs> but if you want, if you want more JFK stuff, look there. That's okay. uh, that's got to be in the conversation as well. But awesome. I mean, Wall Street is a fantastic, yeah. fantastic film. Greed is good. Yep, 
popularize that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, about, you know, again, a moral crisis as a guy who wants to be a stockbroker learns that in order to be successful, he has to <laughs> compromise his integrity yeah, and quite a bit do what essentially is. I mean, he commits crimes mm -hmm. to get ahead. Yeah. All for the um, support and direction of, I guess... Um, his mentor? Yes. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Hey. High five on that. Um, I was thinking it was Jack Donaghy and uh, yeah, Liz Lemon is what I was thinking. Uh, obviously, the mentor played by Michael Douglas. Mm -hmm. The men menity. Menti. <laughs> Menti. <laughs> I like Menti better. Uh, You're thinking Manatee. Whole different thing. I, well, I know, but I, I think I want to popularize Menti because I feel like that is a much more engaging term than Menti. Menti sounds like some sort of shitty tea. Menti. Stick it in the crapper. <laughs> I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. You can take stick in the crapper. I'm going to fight for Menti. Right. We'll see which one gets popularized first. All right. Um, Challenge accepted. Anyway, I mean, it's a great, a, again, what, Oliver Stone is very good at sort of questioning morality. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the things yeah. he's so good at doing. Yeah, and he's this like is, to take a venue that is either popularized or seemingly one-sided oftentimes and uh, throws in these crazy morality struggles. And I think even beyond that, I think he's really good at sort of identifying areas where morality is really suspect mm. and putting a spotlight on it. Yeah. And this is sort of like, you know, the um, the political realm mm. that is going on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, so... The spectrum yes. on all sides. Yes. So, um, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. And... I mean, Michael Douglas obviously won Best Actor. Yeah. Uh, amusingly enough, it spawned I, a sequel. <laughs> it spawned a sequel, which I mean, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not nearly as interesting as the original, and yeah. it's not nearly as provocative since yeah. you know, sort the of. The 80s are over. Yeah, the 80s are over. <laughs> but um, also, it was nominated, or no, it won. Sorry, mm. correction, it won a Razzie Award for Worst Actress in a Supporting Role. Which was who? Daryl Hannah. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, not, not so good. Not so good. But <laughs> Oh, yeah. Daryl Hannah. Yeah, so there is that. Yes, Wall um, Street. Ripping uh, apart business. Also co-starring a brief little role for John C. McGinley. Mm -hmm. Coming back at ya. Yep. Coming back at ya. Slide his way in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slipping slipping in. Mm -hmm. that's, that's gross. Let's not go there. <laughs> um, Bringing us to something we talked about during our DVD picks, mm -hmm. Born on the Fourth of July. Mm-hmm. With <laughs> Tom Cruise. Yeah, just throwing a little flair <laughs> yeah. there. No. July. Uh, uh, uh Yeah, July. Okay. We'll go there. Yes, the Tom Cruise um, story, based on a true story, of mm -hmm. Ron Kovich, mm. I believe is how you pronounce it. I, I will take your... Yeah. Anyway, it's a story of a Vietnam vet. Mm -hmm. Sort of tells his evolution from being a really gung-ho American to someone who goes over to Vietnam, is privy to the atrocities, yes. much like Platoon. Has what um, would be now called PTSD when he gets oh, back. Oh, totally. Um has a horrific sort of uh, readjustment period mm -hmm. to America. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he, uh, he has a rough, rough little yes. life there. Not, uh, not so uh, patriotic by the end. No. And, no, uh, no. Uh, probably one of the earlier interesting cruise roles mm -hmm. in terms of willingness definitely. to take on a provocative stance. Yeah. And, um, and definitely, uh, in my opinion, one of... Uh, Tom Cruise more interesting acted roles because of it. Well, I mean, we we briefly spoke about it. I mean, hopefully people will be happy. We got a little bit of a uh, feedback that people were not or were hoping that we would have talked about it during our Tom Cruise mm. uh, segment. So hopefully they're glad we're talking about it now. Um, but um, anyway, it's um, one of his nominations for Best Actor. Oh, nice. So that lost it course to let's see who was it uh daniel day lewis uh, hard to hard to hard to shit on daniel day lewis you know it's got a good actor my left foot okay yeah but damn it's, no huge mustache in that one i was gonna no. say how can you compete with that mustache no. but he didn't he didn't even have it yeah. it's that awesome he didn't even uh, need a mustache gotta throw out a uh, tom berenger also in this so i love tom berenger tom berenger oliver stone Vietnam flicks, mm -hmm. kind of a recurring theme. I better just kick some major butt. And... Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And again, one best director. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, nominated for best picture. What do you think he lost to? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know Miss Daisy. 
Oh, okay. Driving Miss Daisy. That makes sense. That makes sense. I can see that. Kid, you don't like you don't like Driving Miss Daisy. It's do you? fine. <laughs> it's fine. Do I think it's a best picture worthy <laughs> film? I don't know. I feel like there could be a discussion about it. Like I'm not gonna argue it's as bad as like the English patient. I feel something. like we should just spend you know have entire segments of going through years of uh, nominations and letting you just spit out all the vitriol in your hindsight. That's Probably so clearly imperfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 man, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, also, lost for um, adapted screenplay. Mm. Uh, two. I don't know. Driving Miss Daisy. Oh, okay. Driving Miss Daisy. Again, much like you know, mm-hmm. uh, what's it called? That um, Hannah and her sisters. Mm. It's know. crazy that all these movies happen in like four years. Yeah, all those movies. Yeah, totally. It like was, just, I mean, Renaissance, two best director awards yeah. in four years. Yeah, kind of a, a prolific period, as I said. Mm-hmm. In his career. Two best writing nominations the same year. Two, I mean, two. Yep, plus <laughs> the third fair. two years later. It's yeah. like kind of prolific. Yeah, too bad he didn't hold on to that too. As uh, as yeah, as I would argue that you know the '90s kind of brought about the sort of decline of Oliver mm-hmm. Stone, where he went from provocative and interesting to just sort of provocative and crazy to Mm. just not provocative at times and that kind of really was the beginning of the decline so to speak of his career one of the sort of more interesting borderline films Mm -hmm. that came out during this period was natural born killers which obviously is the story of mickey and mallory (laughs) yes as robert downey jr would say yes um the sort of uh media discussion of the media sensationalism that you know geraldo rivera and Mm -hmm. others sort of popularized and um Combined with just the kind of, like, psychotic criminal element of Nowheresville, America. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of my thing about the film, is it just feels too crazy. Like, it's... it's. No, oh, I don't... I've known people that are... <laughs> I don't, Not obviously serial killers, but I've known people no, that mean, I could see if I'm their life saying, went a different route. I'm totally not saying that up. serial killers are <laughs> implausible. Mm. I just think, the like, the whole film is just like so manic in the story it tells that it's just like a little off-putting and it's interesting that this is you know probably not the first time but as far as like these big hits that we've mentioned this is one of the first time one of the first times that he's not the writer yep and i think i mean you could argue that's part of the problem i think that's both part of the problem and part of the success for me i feel like the parts that I liked, I know probably have to do with it being written, how it's written, and maybe part of it's I don't like also have to do with how it's being written. Like maybe, I don't know if it's maybe just the disconnect between him not being the writer. Maybe his opinion of the written wor- um, work was different. You want my theory know. upon this? I do. I would love your this theory. This is 1994. Uh-huh. It's Quentin Tarantino. It's Oliver Stone. I'm thinking there's probably a lot of nose candy involved mm. during this period. <laughs> I'm just throwing out that theory. And I think <laughs> nobody was really thinking straight. The writing was probably probably pretty crazy. The directing was probably pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, Juliet Lewis and Woody Harrelson, probably not crazy. the most stable yeah. individuals. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr. at this period, okay. probably not the most sound of mind. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe it didn't have as enough restraint Tom Sizemore, on it. again, not the most sound <laughs> mind. Maybe there just wasn't enough restraint, is what you're saying? Maybe Possibly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it also is one of those things that, you know, maybe coming off of two best directors and multiple best picture nominations mm-hmm. and stuff, that he was just like, I'm fucking Oliver Stone, I'm going to do what I want. Yeah, and you and, can kind of feel a little of that in this movie too. I feel like it's it, and maybe it's just how it's how it's done. But I feel like a lot of unlike before, where the sensationalist aspects of his films and parts where they were kind of like severe and hard to watch were usually usually uh, I don't know within the story. And I feel like in Natural Born Killers, most of those are there just to shock you. Yeah, in the same way that they're expecting that the source material is shocking. Well, I mean, I, th- I, th- I, th- I think different. I think that, you know, like, you know, Wall Street and Platoon, it was more, and even born born on the 4th of July, Mm -hmm. it was provocative in the sense that it made you question morality and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Whereas this is like... Yeah, no one's being like, oh yeah, I mean, it's it's, it speaks to like our culture of sensationalism, Mm -hmm. but I don't feel like it's 
provocative in the same sort of thought provoking manner yeah, that it is and more shocking. Of, yeah, exactly. And you know, I mean, I guess America was relatively on board with it because it got he got nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Director. Mm. I personally would not have done such. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that it's just it's it's self indulgent is sort yeah. of my feeling, and I mean. It's not awful, but it's not something that I, like, go out of my way to rewatch. Yeah, and when I think about it, I don't think, like, oh, this is an, um, this is an Oliver Stone film, first off. I don't think about that as, like, a defining aspect of how I think of the movie. I don't think of it in that, in that vein. Mm -hmm. And I also don't necessarily think about it like, oh, this movie's so well-directed. Like, no. Those aren't things that just Curtly, necessarily no. jump out at me, like... Yeah. You know, it's the acting performances, and it's the, some of the just weird insanity of the movie that are things that. Yeah, that's the it thing me. that I mean. That's the thing that stands out to me, like the the head on the stake and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like that kind of stuff is what I think of, and I just think, you know, in some ways, it's sort of like what's happened to comedy now, and that is sort mm. of like provocative for the sake of being provocative. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the rise so. of political correctness. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna skip forward. You know, he had Nixon, mm -hmm. which is the. Anthony Hopkins. Yes, thank you. Which is probably one of the more stable films mm -hmm. he had during this period. He did uh, JFK. U Turn. Yeah, well. JFK. Mm -hmm. uh, U Turn, mm, which that's right. again sort of falls into the natural born killer, mm -hmm. sort of manic y, crazy yeah. sort of film. He kind did any. Crazy for the sake of crazy. Yes. He did Any Given Sunday, which we talked about yes. with Dennis Quaid. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to move to the, the aughts and discuss Alexander. Oh. Um, <laughs> Crap! <laughs> uh, all during this period, like, increasingly, uh, he was becoming, I hate to say less and less relevant. I mean, JFK and uh, Natural Born Killers mm -hmm. were probably the last really yeah. standout ones. I mean, Nixon had its enthusiasts, but mm -hmm. it was not to the same degree as the yes. other ones. Correct. And Alexander was sort of the first... I guess you would say provocative film that came out for him, but in sort of a negative yeah. uh, response. A critical and audience was reception not was good. not well received. It was not and good. I mean, to be fair, the the complaints that they had towards it was kind of like stupid in my opinion. The criticism being that he made Alexander bisexual, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I think the biggest criticism with the movie is that it's boring as shit. Well, that 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 is definitely a fair criticism, <laughs> but it got a lot of negative publicity for Alexander being bisexual. It's sort of like, um, is anybody familiar with history? Like, there's you some know, crazy swinging shit going on back in the day. Even nowadays, people like with Game of Thrones on. It, people made implications in the second, first and second season, and people went all up in arms because that's not how they saw it in the source material. Regardless of where people fall religious and uh, political views, when it comes to sexuality, people have all kinds of interesting opinions Which, that sometimes skew them outside of just their actual interpretation of the art. But it's just, it's not even ignoring that, it's just like a fundamental thing, you know, about history. Mm. Like, sexuality was a much more liberal concept yeah. during the Greeks' rise or, yes, or reign of power. And, yeah. and it's sort of like, okay, you know, I get that you don't like gay stuff, mm -hmm. perhaps, Yeah. but that doesn't mean it existed. Like, yeah. we can't just whitewash mm. history because we don't like it. Yeah, like, it's true. Like, that is what 1984 is all about. <laughs> like, Unfortunately, this movie's nowhere near as interesting as 1984. Well, I mean, it actually shows it, so it's not being whitewashed. Yes, it's okay, sort of the okay, opposite, yeah. but just because people had a problem with it. And yes, it is a bigger problem that it is not exciting. Yeah. Born as shit is a fair yes, other yes. alternative. Well, you know, I, I was looking at some things about it because uh, I was just interested in general. And one of the reviews I read was that it was, it's more a historical film than it is an action film. Yes, documentary was, was the description. Yeah, and there. it was not at all marketed that way. And the story of Alexander Great is of conquest. So if you have a story of conquest with gigantic battles in the sword and sandals era, you and it's all about the history of what happened... That's just not interesting. To well, people. I also think it's tough to, you know, do something like this where I feel like you have to have a much more specific um, idea very, of what you want your story right. like, to be. Like, it's sort of like, like, you know, with like the films about Howard Hughes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, they're interesting, but, I, or J. Edgar, you know, mm -hmm. it's interesting, but I feel like you have to have a much more specific yeah, focus. Yeah, just their whole life is too it's broad. It's too much. Yeah. And it's just sort of like, I, make a like, miniseries. Well, not only Make that, a show. But, like, where, yeah. do you, where do you begin and where do you end? Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. it just feels arbitrary otherwise. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like, yeah, there's so much like narration from Ptolemy mm -hmm. that oh, yeah. really makes it sort of like, okay, this does kind of feel like a documentary. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's also the 
this weird thing where there were multiple releases on DVD. Mm -hmm. There was like the first theatrical version, then yeah. there was <laughs> Oliver Stone's first version, and or first director's cut, mm -hmm. and then there was like the final cut, which yeah. is like three and a half hours. And again, I mean, it feels like it's venturing into that area of like self indulgence oh, yeah. for Alexander or uh, Oliver well, it's Stone. It's like, no, my story of Alexander the Great is perfect. You just didn't get to see it all because the studios. Yeah. And. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like, I feel like, as I said, some of that criticism was, like, ridiculous. And I feel like it's excessively hated upon. Like, I don't mm. think it was good. But, like, I, I mean, like, I feel like there are much, much worse films. Like, Oliver Stone, fundamentally... For all the hoopla this movie got, yeah, I think that's my problem. Because it, it's, it's, when was Gladiator? Two thousand one, two thousand. Oh no, it was like ninety nine or something. Okay, like that. okay. I was still in high school. When okay, that came out. so I mean, like Gladiator, and then three hundred really kicked that. I think three hundred was after. Yeah, this but one. I mean, Gladiator really no, kicked that in the vein. No, actually, right around this time, two thousand four, and maybe? just to come up with when you're talking Greek slash Roman heroic stories, yeah. if you're not making up a new character a la gladiator alexander the great is by far the single biggest badass in that era Ooh, i might argue hands that. down as far as single individual military might i i might argue uh caesar i think caesar would be pretty badass Mm, Caesar didn't control as much of the world as Alexander the Great uh, did i don't i don't know if i would argue that i think the romans might have controlled more of the world than the greeks so, let me just throw that out there. I have a little uh, chart that I had at one point that showed how much of the world was controlled by whom. Um, I'm just saying that... Uh, I, he's, a, badass, he's, he's good. Though. He's, he's yeah. he, Winning by dipl diplomacy and being <laughs> oh, a political leader like Caesar. I, I'll give you that he might have been a little <laughs> bit more on the front lines than Julius Caesar, but yes. Julius Caesar was definitely pretty badass. He wielded an iron fist, my friend. Fine. I'll uh, just say Greek. Okay. There you go. Okay. Done. Talking Greek. He, he's, he's definitely top five. I'll give you that. But I'll tell you my biggest problem with the film. Um, number one, Angelina Jolie is the mother. Very peculiar. Mm -hmm. um, number two, Colin Farrell as a blonde. Really, really yeah. off-putting. Really, really yeah. off-putting. And obviously others agreed because it was nominated for six Razzies. <laughs> worst actor, worst picture, worst actress, worst supporting actor, worst director, worst writing. Like It was... Um, <laughs> Pretty hated, uh, pretty hated, and it's. And it's is this back to Oliver Stone writing? Yep. Yep. Okay. Producing as well. Mm -hmm. Had Anthony Hopkins coming back, you know, from Nixon. Mm -hmm. So, didn't work out so well for him. Nope. And uh, Val Kilmer putting on some weight, which mm -hmm. one might he's argue, never he's, kept yeah, never, anymore. yeah, never taken away, <laughs> kept it all along. So. Now he's fat Kilmer. Yeah. So, anyway. Again, in the realm of political movies, mm -hmm. yet another one. We've we've talked about, you know, uh, Vietnam, mm -hmm. JFK, Born on the Fourth of July, mm -hmm. Alexander, Nixon, mm -hmm. W. Mm -hmm. I mean, Oliver Stone really has a hard on for political yeah. movies, and and this is like as his candidacy was ending, two thousand eight. Yeah, yeah. No, this is so right. I mean, uh, like this right. Is Right, he's barely out of office. <laughs> yeah, and I think the thing that was most shocking to um, most people mm. was honestly how vanilla this film was. Yes. For Oliver Stone... For the timing, for the subject matter, for Oliver Stone... It was very just blasé, and I mean, perhaps it's because he didn't write it. Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah, so. It's I an mean, adaptation I, of a book, right? Or, or, no, uh, uh, or is it just... I, I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know about that, but it's written by someone else entirely. Oh, okay. And... I mean, I, I mean, I believe he's spoken and said, you know, that he's fine with the material or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, it wasn't any, it wasn't like skewering of George W. Yeah. Bush like liberals had hoped. And it wasn't like pro George W. Bush mm -hmm. like Republicans would have hoped, but mm -hmm. I'm sure they didn't expect. Yeah. It was just like, this is a dude. Yeah. Here's some stuff he did. Which I mean is sad that that's that the that the most realistic and probably honest, not version of his story, but version of a person. Because he likes to put those morality situations, and it usually ends up with a person making individual choices. Yeah. It's so sad that like he did that with this contemporary figure, and all this stuff around it, and in the end, it was kind of like, e -e okay, but that wasn't that interesting. <laughs> well, I think I think the problem was that like everyone was expecting him to be anti-establishment, mm, and yeah. he essentially based was on just everything like, else, he's almost everything right. else. <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, it's, it's this is what happens. Yeah. It's sort of like, wait, you're just kind of cool with 
everything. Yeah. Like you're not gonna yeah. nail him for like doing something yeah, that uh, you didn't Iraq like. war yeah, or something yeah. like that or out of the many things that you could pull out to decide to criticize him, you're just but gonna let most of them slide by. Here's a theory. Perhaps Oliver Stone in some ways can relate to George W. Bush as a flawed individual, mm. you know. Both of them have uh, had their bouts with uh, substance abuse, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. You know, both of them have been have had their ups and definitely exactly. I mean, maybe maybe there's some element of it that he could relate himself to that, mm-hmm. and that's why it was perhaps a more positive overall mm-hmm. picture. I mean, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't singing the praises of George yeah. W. Bush either, yeah. but it wasn't hating him. And I feel like because of that, both sides were like, "Screw this movie! Yeah. Like we don't care." Exactly. And that's why it didn't succeed. I mean, Josh Brolin. Very yeah. good W. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, he was great person to cast. Yeah. Toei did that part great of actor. justice. And there's a lot of other great people, you know, in it. But, uh, yeah, just never really found its audience, mm-hmm. sadly. And yeah, I mean, unlike Game Change, which came out a year or so ago, yeah, the, about you know Julian Moore. Yeah. That not him. I'm doing it. But I'm saying another contemporary right. recent one right. that managed to take its material and do it in just enough of an interesting way that people want to see it. Yeah. So, anyway, that brings us to now, this Friday, the 6th, sixth. Sixth, yes. Yes, the 6th of July, July. doing some math there mm-hmm. again, uh, we're talking Savages, mm-hmm. this is again a return to writing and directing mm-hmm. by Oliver Stone, it's the story of a uh, couple, <laughs> was it pot uh, farmers, it's, yeah, pot, it's pot, a pot growers, l- love triangle, yes, Starring uh, Blake Lively, Oof. Taylor Kitsch, Oof. and Aaron Johnson, mm. <laughs> uh, who go up against a Mexican cartel after they kidnap Blake Lively, mm-hmm. who's sort of the uh, yeah. paramour Mexican cartel run by Selma Hayek. I like the, you know I like that they not against the, it, but there was that okay? there was that <laughs> that one woman actually in Miami who was like the leader of a drug cartel. No, I'm not so. saying anything about a woman that couldn't be a leader of a drug cartel. I'm just thinking Selma Hayek maybe not. Who I would think that's she all. is sexy and you know it. True, <laughs> but um, like but the song. No, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> uh, take my shoe off and hit you with it. <laughs> I think my bigger question, like I, I think it sounds like it looks interesting mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Love Triangle kind of puts me off. Yeah. Like I'm like I don't really understand why this film needs this. Yeah, but yeah, okay. And I can understand what they're trying to do with it, but I don't think it's effective. Which is that that a way to have both protagonists be equally as. Uh, into the survival and mm, safe mm. being of her character if they're both in love with her and both in a relationship then one isn't more right than the other perhaps yeah it gives, but i don't know it feels it feels a little weird and i mean taylor kitsch is on a terrible string this year so that doesn't <laughs> really well is. for it aaron johnson eh he's okay I mean, yeah I don't, he, hasn't done, he hasn't done anything that i like horrible, but he hasn't also done much he other than won kick me. ass. He hasn't won me over. Nowhere and boy, Blake Lively, I'm really not a fan of. I no. really don't. But you know, Benicio del Toro, he's yeah. enjoyable. Selma Hayek's enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I'll give Tr- John Travolta the benefit of the doubt as well. So mm, yeah, I, I'm looking cur- creepy. Yes, looking very creepy. I'm looking to check. I'm looking forward to checking it out. You know, mm-hmm. I I will give it a, the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. I hope Oliver Stone can come back. Doesn't look like it's got that produ- provocative element mm-hmm. that has been so important for him in the past. I, I don't know if that'll mean it's just not as interesting. I don't know if it's just me or if maybe we're I'm, we're just so dead into the stuff in society. But I have a hard time imagining any kind of pot farmer to be a badass. I just mm. think of them as shaggy. Perhaps and so. It's hard for me to That's... imagine like. A pot farmer being all like, "Yeah, I'm gonna kill people and save my lady." After a, I sit down on this couch for a couple hours, that that is a, a pretty interesting point. Maybe that they're I smoking agree. something that you know, Maybe they're laced else. with something <laughs> yeah, like PCP yeah. laced marijuana. Yeah, yeah, they're pot farmers, and by that they grow opium. <laughs> I mean, who knows? I you never know. Yeah, he likes. Like, like I said, I, I I'm not a pot farmer. I, I would, don't know. I would so. like Oliver Stone to return to the uh, realm of relevancy. Yeah, so. I feel like he's running out of stories, though. I think that's the problem. Maybe we'll see. Let's know your thoughts about Oliver Stone and join us next week for our DVD rundown for the week of July 10th. It's kind of a weak month for movies in the yeah. theater, so maybe Savages will be one of the surprises. Maybe. Who knows? Let's know your thoughts at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number. 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. Mm-hmm. We're on Miro. Uh, Roku. Blip. 
Blip, good Dot call. TV. Check in at Get Glue. Mm -hmm. See you next time. Can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This tech don't even try to bite the side of the Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.